Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about how to build websites in 2018. This particular video is for people who've never designed websites before. So if you're a regular viewer of my videos, you probably are going to find this a little bit boring. So what I'm going to do here is going to give you the big picture about web design today because designing websites in 2018 and recording this in October is very different than what we did eight years ago, six years ago, 10 years ago, etc. So there are a few different options that you have in terms of getting a website up. I'm assuming that you're maybe an aspiring web designer, maybe you're a small business owner who is looking to put up a website and you see all these options out there and you're not sure which way to go. So I'm gonna go over a few of them, give you the pros and cons so you understand which way would be best given your particular needs. So let's start with doing web design the traditional way using web design coding, that's HTML and CSS. These are two languages you would have to learn and uh, it allows you to build any type of website that you could possibly see out there in the world. There is literally no limitations in terms of what you could build if you got into uh, the nuts and bolts, the basics of building a website. Now, the downside is that you're gonna have to learn how to do it. So you got a little bit of that upfront time that you have to devote to learning how to build sites, but then the payoff is you have maximum flexibility, no limits. So another option in terms of web design is to get a program, a web design program like a Dreamweaver being one of the most popular out there, where it has tools that will help you build a website. You still have to know a little bit of code, but it has some capabilities. These, the software has some capabilities that allows you to uh, do things a little bit more quickly than you would normally. The trade-off using a web design software like Dreamweaver, they call these types of software WYSIWYGs, so what you see is what you get. It's almost like using Microsoft Word or PowerPoint to build a site. Again, you're trading ease of getting into it, meaning it's easier to get up and running, I suppose, with using a program like Dreamweaver, a web design program like Dreamweaver, but you are sacrificing maximum flight flexibility and capability, you're going to be limited by your knowledge and you're going to be limited by the capabilities of this web design software. Again, it's still viable. And in fact, a lot of people who learn how to code, learn how to build websites by hand using the code, they will use a program like Dreamweaver just to speed up the process. So it's not an either or. You can learn a bit the basics of coding and then you could jump into Dreamweaver or some other web design program to speed up the process. Again, this gives, gives you maximum flexibility in terms of the type of sites you can build. But you got that extra overhead of having to learn the stuff. We can go a step further away from code. We can get into something called a content management system. A lot of people will call them CMSs. And the most popular one out there is something called WordPress. WordPress is basically something that you install on your web server. This is the uh, place where all the websites, where your, your website would live on the web, excuse me. And then this allows you to access your website. Again, this is, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole about web servers and hosting and domain names, all this kind of stuff. You could check out more videos on this channel about that, or you could check out my courses where I cover all this and much more. Anyhow, so WordPress is something where you install on a hosting platform and uh, a lot of hosting companies where you, you would have your website be live on the web, a lot of hosting companies will allow you to, they'll have WordPress ready for you, just click, boom, one button and it installs. And with WordPress, it allows you to basically have a website up and running very quickly and you can write articles and add video and text and all this stuff, all kinds of other stuff. And you don't have to know any code. Now, the thing is, you have to learn WordPress. WordPress can uh, be a beast in of itself. It's very capable and powerful, but it has its shortcomings as well. So, again, it's yet another way to get a website up quickly and easily. For example, on my commercial sites, killersites.com, howtobuildwebsites.com, killerphp.com, etc. 
I will use WordPress for part of the site, for the part of the site where I'm publishing articles on a regular basis and so forth. It just makes it easy. But again, you have to learn WordPress. Um, some people love it, some people don't like it. Again, it has its pros and cons like anything else in this life. That said, WordPress is supremely popular. It's the most popular system of its type in the world out there. And so it does have its merits. Don't confuse a web design program like Dreamweaver versus a content management system like WordPress are totally different things. The next level is to use a web builder like a Wix or a Squarespace and there are others out there. And these are point and click, drag and drop web builders. You pay a monthly fee, It'd be nine bucks a month, 20 bucks a month, depending on the features. So using the point and click builders, you're able to get a website up and running super quickly. Now, this is the most limited of uh, options you have in terms of getting a website live. They are powerful tools, the web builders, but they're very, very limited. And if you need to do some customizations outside the scope of their of the tools that they provide for you, then you could be stuck entirely where I've seen I've had many people approach me say, hey, I, I have a Wix site or a Squarespace site and I've grown beyond it. I need to get into something else. Can you help me with this or that or the other thing? Although Wix has recognized that and they provided a, an extra layer for coders to be able to uh, customize Wix sites to a much greater level. But then you become a coder again. If you have a relatively simple site, a portfolio site, let's say you're a photographer or maybe you're, you're selling t-shirts or something, then Wix might be suitable for you, at least in the beginning. And in fact, I do teach web designers that Wix is an option. It's a viable option, and it's something to consider when you're building out simple websites. And so you can start with Wix, or you can start with Squarespace or any of these web builders, and then slowly build into other areas, uh, or use other tools, rather. So they all have their places. What are my recommendations? If it's just a site that's a brochure site, then you might want to use a web builder. You may. My recommendation though would be to probably leverage WordPress, so so you get sort of that that blend of flexibility with uh, ease of use. So yes, installing WordPress is a little bit more difficult than using a web builder, but then you got a lot more power as well. And if you find that you know, the website that you're building for your business or the website you're going to build is going to be central to your business, it's going to be important, you want to expand upon it, then you may want to get into coding. And then from there, you can make decisions in terms of what tools you're going to use. You may become a great web designer coder, but you may also use WordPress as well. So there's a depends. It all depends. So there you go. That's a, a basic quick overview of what you have, what you could do in terms of building websites, how to build websites in 2018. If you have any comments about anything I discussed in this video, just leave a comment below and I'll attempt to answer it. I may do a video in response to any of your questions. All right, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.